all of a sudden I realized I was choking. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Good morning, good morning. If anyone has stumbled across this vlog because of the name and the title, welcome to the channel. My name's Tiff. My beautiful pregnant wife, Carrie, should be next to me, but she is not. Uh, unfortunately, she still has a little bit of a headache today. Um, in case you didn't know, we had to take an impromptu trip to the ER yesterday. It was the fancy OBER, so she was able to get in right away, right when we got there. Uh, she had had a, a migraine for about three days, and uh, the 24-7 nursing staff at our doctor's office said it would be a good idea if she went in. So migraines are one of the key factors in a condition called preeclampsia. So we're okay, baby's okay, mom's okay, but mom still has a bit of a headache, so she's trying to do like a, a screen-free day. So she's actually taking a nap right now, which leaves me flying solo. So if you're new, welcome. Um, if you like what you see at the end of the video, make sure you give a thumbs up or put give one now. You know, and then if you don't like it, you can just unthumb it, am I right? Um, also, if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and maybe click that bell for notifications because, again, I can't say this enough. Uh, YouTube is now cutting down on the number of people who get notified. Like, even when we do live streaming and we go live, people aren't getting notified. It's about a quarter of your, um, we call them campers, but subscribers. So, it's been really crazy. But anyway, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. The last one I did was the one where I got arrested when I was younger and put in the back of a cop car. Um, this one is going to be about the time that I literally almost choked and died. Uh, I told this um, story live one day and somebody was like, I need to hear this whole story. What's the whole story? So I'm going to tell you the story. I'm going to try and make it as animated as I can because it's literally just me sitting on the couch here. Um, and I really don't have any cool props with this, but I will try to animate it as best I can. So here we go. <sighs> My family lives downriver. Um, and there's this restaurant that I've gone to my entire life. I, I still, every time I go visit my mom, I'll make the drive and I will go to the restaurant. It's called Shang Hay and it's in Trenton, Michigan. And I absolutely, I just, I love their sweet and sour chicken. I love their, uh, sweet and sour sauce. I just, I really love it. Um, I'm really picky about my food since I've been, you know, all over the states. Not not really a lot outside of the country, but I just, like I can tell you, I got some uh, crab meat cheese from this place in Wisconsin one time, or Ian's Pizza in Wisconsin is my favorite pizza. So anyway, really picky about foods because once you eat a food that's really good, you just don't forget it, am I right? I've said that twice now and I've never said that before in a vlog, so hope that doesn't stick. <laughs> I almost did it again. So anyway, um, I went there one time and I was with a friend uh, and we just decided to get some food. And I ordered food, and went, you know, we went into the restaurant, we were having a good old time. I got, I think it's called the number eight because it's sweet and sour chicken, fried rice, and you get uh, some, I think they call them crab rangoons there. And I remember getting a Coke. So what had happened was, we were just talking, I was eating, and if anyone knows me, you know, in real life, I'm a very slow eater. I take tiny bites, I take forever to eat. I'm usually the last one done eating, which is so funny because that does not reflect my size. So I am just an oddball, just for sure. So anyway, I remember taking a bite of chicken and chewing it up, and for some reason, I felt like I needed a drink. So I grabbed a drink of my delicious cherry coke that they put the cherries in. I'm telling you, this Chinese place is really good. All of a sudden, I realized I was choking. So, I don't know if any of you have, have choked before, but I've choked twice in my life, and this was the first time. I was literally, the just the that feeling of, holy crap, I am not getting air in. I'm not getting air in through my mouth, through my nose, through anything. I mean, this panic just 
sets over you. It, it's just, oh my gosh, it was, it just overcame me. Well, my friend who was with me was, ended up giving me the Heimlich. And sadly, there were a ton of people in the restaurant. So like, it, and most of it came back up except a little bit. So there was like rice and little bits of food on the floor, but I took a drink again and I started choking again. Cause what had happened was the sweet and sour chicken, the bite actually lodged itself into my throat wherever, obviously down the wrong pipe. So I started to not be able to breathe again. I was choking again. But then I realized when I tipped myself forward uh, for when my friend was helping me with the Heimlich, all the drink came out. So I ended up going into the bathroom to try and figure out what the heck was going on. Like, why can't I take a drink? And I tried to take a little sip of water again while I was in the bathroom, which was really stupid um, because nobody was with me at the time. My friend was basically like helping to kind of put the table and chair back where they went because I'm pretty sure that I like knocked everything when I got up because I was so scared. So I, I went into the bathroom immediately into the, into the stall and I, you know, tilted my body and the drink ended up coming back out. So I remember this and I started to try and, and burp because I felt like, okay, maybe if I burp, this will actually come out. And it didn't. Nothing was going out. I couldn't swallow. Um, even though you think you only swallow a little bit, I found out later, according to the doctor, that there's a lot of like uh, saliva and stuff like that in your throat. So once you actually take that initial swallow, you're actually swallowing close to an ounce of fluid. And I'm thinking, wow. So every time I swallowed, it it really hurt and it took a second for it to go down. So it was easier for me to just keep spitting. And it was really gross because I am definitely not a spitter, especially, you know, driving in a car down the road, it's spitting out the window because we ended up deciding that it was best if I went to the doctor, to the, you know, to a hospital, to, to the ER. So I get to the ER and they explain to me, oh, so this is what happened. We're going to get you in. We're going to see, you know, what we can do. So they gave me all these different pills and they crushed them up. They were like in a powder form. And um, one of the pills I even put on my tongue so it dissolved. I don't remember what any of them were called because this happened so long ago. In fact, I kind of think this happened in, I think it was 2005, somewhere in there. So it was a long time ago. Um... So long story short, which it's already been about eight minutes and I'm still going, I ended up having to have surgery because everything they tried, everything they tried to break it up with all of the x-rays that they had seen, they actually could see this giant blockage. So they were kind of worried that if I were to cough, if I were to do anything, I could all of a sudden be blocked. So two hours later after I got there, they told me I had to go into surgery. So I was really nervous and really scared and I didn't get a hold, I couldn't get a hold of my mom. Um, so I ended up going, you know, back for surgery and I remember they had to put this contraption into my mouth. So it was probably about that, if I can give you a reference here, it's probably about that long and it, I think it was about this wide. It went inside my mouth to like keep my mouth open and it had a hole in it. So obviously it was for them to reach down in there and pull the chicken out. So I remember saying, am I gonna feel any of this and, and so on. And then they gave me the drugs to knock me out. But apparently I had a huge conversation. If you guys are familiar with me and familiar with the vlog, you know that I have a serious case of talking in my sleep. It is bad whenever I get put under for things. I apparently was having a full-fledged conversation with the people. I still see one of the nurses to this day because she's friends with my mom. And she tells me that I am, I'm her, I've been her funniest ER patient of all time still because she was telling me I was having again, a full conversation about how I was never going back to Shanghai again. I was never going to be able to eat in the restaurant. I was so embarrassed because I was, you know, basically throwing up in front of the people there and just all of this. So anyway, I wake up and I finally start coming to and I'm laying down 
and I have this bag and I look at the bag and it's a, come here baby Roo, it's a biohazard bag. And inside the bag, there's a cup, like one of those specimen cups with this piece of chicken in it. So I guess while I was like out of it, completely not knowing it, after they pulled it out, I started saying hallelujah and asked if I could keep the chicken to show my friends. They had told me they had never had anyone ever ask that before. So I guess I like really, you know, caught them off their guard. And they ended up giving it to me, which was really funny because I ended up keeping that chicken in a bag for a long time because I wanted to show people. Uh, it, they showed me the chicken and it was a very tiny piece of chicken, but the only reason that I made it, I mean, I don't know if I would have made it if, um, you know, my friend was giving me the Heimlich, maybe I would have, but the reason I was able to get to the hospital and not, you know, die or choke on the way there was because the chicken itself was indented a little bit. So it had like this, instead of it being completely round, it was like this. So just that little tiny bit of airway was what was keeping me breathing. And I gotta tell you, you guys, after like coming to, after seeing that and seeing that piece of chicken with that little indent, I was like thanking my lucky stars because I might not even be here making this video if it wasn't for that little indent. So unfortunately, the second part of the story is Choking on this chicken completely changed my life and not for the better. It actually changed it to the worse. My anxiety, which was pretty much non-existent before then, it manifested into this whole, I don't want to eat out in front of people. I don't want to go to public places where people can see me possibly choke. I stopped going to restaurants. I was always ordering takeout. You know, I mean, I didn't eat a lot of takeout back then, but anytime somebody wanted to go, if there was ever a birthday and people were going out, I just didn't eat when I was at the restaurant. I would just get a drink. So it got to be so inconvenient for me and for everyone in my family because I just wouldn't go out and celebrate. I wouldn't go out and eat dinner or anything. So then that manifested into I can't eat certain foods, I can't eat chicken because I could choke on it. And while I was at the hospital, um, this lady told me, yeah, this happened with my husband when he was eating steak. He hasn't been able to eat steak since. And I was like, oh my God. So I stopped eating meat. It was probably a good year before I started eating meat again. I was that scared. So before I get talking about um, I'm not trying to take this away from like what happened, but I'm trying to just explain to you guys how this anxiety about eating in front of people because I was afraid that they were going to see me choke completely manifested into this whole huge, I don't want to leave the house anymore because people can see me do anything, like see me fall. I mean, it was pretty crazy, like all these different things that I kept justifying. Like, no, I don't want to go there. No, I don't want to go to the, you know, Pistons game because, you know, what if, I fall going up the stairs and all those people see me, they're just going to laugh at me. And this went on, sadly, for a very long time. And then one day I just woke up and thought, I can't live my life like this. I don't even know what's going on outside anymore. You know, I mean, I wasn't stuck inside the house, don't get me wrong. I still went to school. I still did what I had to do. But I mean, I was missing out on all of these great adventures that all of my friends and family were doing, and I wasn't being a part of that anymore. And I kind of had to make some decisions. You know, it started to where I said, hey, do you know the Heimlich when we're going out with someone? And they'd be like, yeah. And I'd say, all right, would you feel weird trying to give that to me if I was choking? And of course, all my friends and family said, no, I would definitely give you the Heimlich. You know, but then I started to explain to people, hey, I know this seems like a really strange request and you probably don't get this too often, but this is what's going on with me. This is what's going on in my head. And I just kind of need a little bit of reassurance that, you know, y'all are going to help me with this and just ease my, you know, ease my anxiety a bit. So it wasn't until I stood up, it wasn't until I said something to people till I felt comfortable telling them, hey, yeah, I choked on chicken a while ago and it since then really screwed me up. So now I feel like I got to kind of have that net of like, hey, do you know how to do the Heimlich just in case something happens? And then eventually I realized these people love me and people in public, they're good people too. Not everyone is just inherently bad. 
you know, and I, somebody said it to me, and I don't even remember who it was, but if I saw someone choking, would I really be mad that they were choking and they ruined my dinner? No, I would be happy that they were okay in the end. And I would have probably run up to them and said, oh my gosh, are you all right? Is there something I can do? You know, are you breathing? Are you breathing? I would give them the Heimlich. I wouldn't be mad at them at all. But it took years for me to finally get to that point. So, I didn't mean to like go off on a little PSA, but I think it's important to be real with you guys to let you know how this one little incident snowballed into me having anxiety. And unfortunately, I still do have some anxiety. I know it stems from, you know, that time whenever I take a big bite of something and I feel like my throat is a little like too full. I have to wait a second. I can't take a drink right away. And then I'll try to burp to make sure I can burp. And if I can't burp right away, then I get nervous, you know, and it's a little bit of a process, but I'm getting better day by day. Here we are like, what, 13 years later, and I'm still a little bit worried about it, but that's how it is. And that's what you gotta do with anxiety. You literally gotta take it day by day because if you spend all that time worrying about what may happen, you're gonna forget about what is currently happening. And I didn't wanna do that anymore. So let's end on more of a positive, funny note. A little time goes by and I decide, hey, I'm gonna start eating chicken again. Specifically, I'm gonna start getting shang hay. For some reason though, I wasn't ready to go back into the restaurant and eat. Too many memories and I had come so far, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give myself this one. I'm gonna let myself give in. I'm gonna negatively reinforce this crazy behavior of mine. I'm just not gonna eat at the restaurant. And takeout's fine. I mean, sure, I gotta drive a little farther to get there and come back like when I'm visiting my parents because you know they're not in that area anymore. But you know what, it's worth it. It's worth all the good food. But every time I go in there to this day, again, years and years later, the owner will look at me, she'll put, I can't because I got a little baby kitty with me, but she'll put both hands on her neck and go eh, eh, eh. Like she's telling me that she hasn't forgotten this. I mean, literally right when I walk in, she doesn't recognize it's me when I'm ordering, but she sees me and she's like, eh, 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 eh. how are you? Are you okay? You know, like, so she's being really nice to me, but I don't think she realizes, you know, at first it really bothered me, but I don't even think she realizes how, you know, bad that could be to someone to keep giving them that constant reminder. But you know what? Don't sweat the small stuff. That's what I just keep telling myself. I think it's fun that, you know, I have left this much of an impression on a restaurant owner, you know, who that restaurant is packed. If anyone lives in that area or knows about that restaurant, people come from all over Down River to go eat there. And it's in a strip mall. So it truly is like a lot of people who probably aren't from the area, they're like, oh, I'm not gonna order Chinese from a strip mall. It's just like getting one of those pizzas that you got to take home and cook yourself, you know? But I, I really do, uh, I really hope that more people give it a chance because they are really missing out. But anyway, this busy place still remembers me after all these years. And that kind of makes me, you know, I don't know, I guess I'm pretty memorable at times. So anyway, that was the story of how I almost died, how I had to get surgery, and if it wasn't for a little indent in my chicken, I possibly wouldn't be here, but I am here. I've overcome a lot of demons since that chicken. So use the chicken as a metaphor in your life. Anxiety stems from somewhere. Maybe you can figure out where it comes from. And then maybe you can make a little bit of a joke about it. Maybe that lady with, you know, <coughs> I, I, don't, I don't know her name. I'm sure it's not Mrs. Shang Hei because that's probably not it. But I don't know her name. I've I've never asked her for her name. She's always pleasant. But that's the funny part of the story that makes me kind of look back and laugh a little bit. It makes me realize that everybody copes with things in a different way. So there it is. I hope you've enjoyed it. We should be back to regularly scheduled vlogs tomorrow. But no guarantees. I have no idea. Um, but thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving us a thumbs up. Um, we really appreciate everything. 
and uh, I know I don't know if you guys can really see her but baby Rue and I say we will catch you on the flippity you okay